out. These niggas they ain't working for real. They at the rest house. These niggas they ain't serving for real. I need it fresh out. You lurking, leave you hurting for real. Who wanna test now? I'm urging as a Peace, love, and life family. It is Dana, the Holistic Goddess, and I am back here with another video. So if this is your first time to my channel, welcome, welcome. Um, here on my channel, I talk about all things holistic health. I am speaking from a perspective of my journey and my journey only, um, and I am just here to share that with um, whoever cares to listen or whoever that resonates with um, in hopes to inspire and enlighten others um, as I travel on my path of enlightenment. If you are familiar with my channel, then welcome back. Um, I have another video. So today's video is going to be about um, my transition into the comedic diet. And I just wanna, you know, make this clear. I don't want this video to be too long because I tend to go into further detail and I ramble, you know, and I tell things from a perspective where like, I just really want you to grasp it the way I grasp it. And you know, sometimes that ain't all necessary. So today's video, like, I'm just gonna give you a brief overview of everything that's been going on. Well, see, I just wanna chime in right here real quick. Um, that was the plan. You heard me say brief, but you know, once I started getting into the video and I started expressing everything that's been happening in the last, you know, six, seven months, um, since December, I realized that this video, you know, ultimately, if I wanted to really be transparent and let y'all know everything I've been going through, I couldn't just be brief. So, <clears throat> as you can see from the length of this video already, it was not brief, but everything that I said in this video is necessary and I feel like it could be a big help to those who are interested um, in what the basis of this video is about so um yeah i just had to come in and let y'all know that this video ain't brief but you know continue so today's video like i'm just gonna give you a brief overview of everything that's been going on because i know i have videos up of bits and pieces of my journey like my um haul that i did at my my grocery haul that i did at aldi's i have bits and pieces of me working out and telling you what was going on in that moment and you know i'm back and y'all probably looking at me and y'all like girl i see your collarbone like your face skinny like who where, where you at because i get that often now people look at me and they be like what are you eating nothing and i'm just like no nah, i'm eating i'm just eating the right stuff um so i'm just gonna give y'all a little overview and um let y'all know what's been going on and then i'm going to let you know what i am doing currently and what i plan to do um moving forward into my future so i have a uh, paper wrote um I, I have notes written here they're very sloppy because um you know, I was just jotting down ideas and I had arrows and everything pointing me in the right direction so I could stay on topic, okay? Um, so before I begin, um, ultimately my transition into the comedic diet is based on the book by Muwada Ashby and I will show you here. Um, this is the book. Um, I love, 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 love this book. Um, I'll get into detail about all of this, but it is called The Comedic Diet, Ancient African Wisdom for Health of Mind, Body, and Spirit, based on the natural diet and health system of ancient Kemet and Nubia. Um, the real soul food for self-healing and spiritual enlightenment, answers for cancer, high blood pressure, heart disease, high cholesterol, arthritis, diabetes, mental health, depression, stress, worry, spiritual stagnation, including a 30-day detoxification program. Dr. Muada Ashby, editor and contributing author, Dr. Karen Deja Clark Ashby. Sorry if I butchered the um, middle name or the more African name, I, I apologize. Yeah, so I'll get into all of this in a minute, but first I'm gonna start here so I can stay on track. Let's rewind, okay, let's rewind back to December. In December, I got sick. Um, it was around the time where I had, of course, throughout the years of me being pescatarian, which like I said, ultimately I was striving to be vegan. If you look back at my other videos that where I talk about my journey, um, I had been, you know, still indulging in dairy but i had really been striving my hardest to kind of stay away from it but at the same time i was still indulge and mentally that was weighing on me because i would feel guilty then i would kick a craving would kick in and then i would you know try to abstain from it which that would kind of make me miserable because i kind of felt like i was punishing myself even though i was trying to tell myself i wasn't punishing myself it kind of felt that way because 
you know, I really wasn't ready to let it go. So anyways, this was around the time where I was really, you know, at this point, not, you know, trying to abstain from it. I was just eating it like willingly whenever. Um, and although I was, I was kind of striving to get away from it, but at the same time, again, you know, I wasn't, I wasn't, and see, this is where my brain farts come in, y'all. Like, I was striving to get away from it, but at the same time, like, my actions showed that I wasn't striving to get away from it. But then there were times where I'm just like, okay, I'm gonna start tomorrow. Um, I'm, but today I'm gonna, you know, indulge in all of it that I can get because I know I'm gonna have to let it go tomorrow. And then tomorrow comes and, you know, when that temptation comes in, you know, I throw all my progress out the window and I'm just like, you know what, maybe I'll start at two o'clock. Then two o'clock come around and then I'll think back, you know, I'll be eating something. And then next thing you know, I might want something else. And um, long story short, I don't stick to what I say I'm gonna stick to. So, um, and see, that's what I mean by going into detail and spending too much time on something. Um, so I, it was around this time I started getting sick. I got really congested. Um, my throat was very sore and mind you, I'm not the type of person where I get sick very often. I may get sick around the times where the seasons change, um, but I'm not, like my immune system is pretty strong. Um, so when I do get colds, it's, it's very um, hard on me because I'm not used to, you know, getting sick like that, you know what I mean? So. My throat was hurting, um, you know, I had a lot of mucus from the point where like it's in the back of your throat and you trying to like, you know, do that little thing where you get it in the back of your throat and then you try to push it out from the back of your throat to your mouth and then spit it out in a napkin. It came to the point where it was so much that it didn't have a choice but to roll down the back of my throat. I just felt like pure shit and then like my body was, my, my my spirit was kind of blaming my spirit and my mind or I, well really my mind and the reason why I say my spirit is because I I felt it you know I felt it before I could be able to say it um, and so my spirit and my mind um, pointed towards the food being the issue because at this time I was reading Hood Health and it was talking about how dairy creates like excess mucus and you know you hear about Dr. Savy saying you know when you eat really acidic foods it creates you know an overproduction of mucus and then that leads into the process of disease and so all of these things started to come in and you know I was looking in the mirror and I was just looking at myself and I was like man look like I'm just tired of looking like this like you know, back when I first went vegan and the weight started dropping off, like I was beginning to get happy with what I was seeing, like with my physical appearance. And then now I've, I see the weight creep, creeping back in. I don't want, like the way I look at my clothes. You know, I just, at this point, like I'm tired of yo-yoing. Like I really need to like discipline myself and go hard, right? So at that point in December of this past December, 2018, um, I really committed myself to doing Insanity Max 30. And luckily, I do have it sitting right here next to me. So this is month one, and this is month two. Um, the program is from Beachbody, um, and the trainer on this one is Shanti. Um, and this man knows what he's doing. Um, yeah, you know, the conscious community may be looking at it like, oh, he's gay, you support a homosexual, this, that, and a third. He a brother, and I'm looking at him from that aspect, and I, you know, I give credit where credit is due. He know what he doing, you know what I mean? Um, so the program worked. Um, I did it from December to like, I think mid-February, somewhere around February, I was done with the program. I, did, I missed one day, it was a Wednesday, I missed it. And I was just feeling bad, I was like, no. I was like, cause I should've did it yesterday, but I was like, the reason why I didn't is I was like, cause I was being lazy, so I'm like, you know, I'm just gonna go ahead and do my two workouts cause I was like, I don't wanna mess up my streak, I've been doing good, it's the only day I missed the workout. So I ended up doing Wednesday and Thursday's workout on Thursday and from that point on, I didn't miss another workout. I did it on the day that I was supposed to, whether it was really late at night and I had to get up the next morning and still do another workout, whatever, I still got it done. So I ended up completing the two months. I saw my progress change through um, my uh, max time because the point of it is is when you start out the program the clock starts at zero it'll count up it's a 30 minute workout you work out five times a week this ain't a review but i'm just telling y'all like what i noticed um and um how it works is there's 
the time. So basically you work out, you go hard, whether you're modifying or whether you're um, doing the full workout, the full move um, of the uh, in the workout, um, you have to keep moving. The moment that you stop, you have to write down your stop, your stop time your, or your max time because that's the max that you could go. You maxed out. So the point of the workout, Shanti knows like even if you work out on a daily, you're going to max out. So Anyways, my max time started getting higher and higher. I went from maxing out at like 56 seconds, which I talk, I have a video on here of my review kind of, of like insanity. So I talk about all of that. My max times increased. Um, I had flexibility in my hips, like my squats got better. You know, I was, my endurance got better, which means like my max times got higher. Um, I just seen so many physical improvements. And, you know, even though I was looking in the mirror, kind of like back and forth, like, do I see change? Like, do I not? see change you know i was i was really going back and forth you know because you want to you want to see it you want to have something confirmed that you're doing something right so like and sometimes like i would rush but i will always when i felt like i'm um, giving up and it kind of reminded me of the times of my previous journeys before i came into you know um being vegetarian and being vegan and you know before i started really coming into like a more health conscious state um in the past when i would still eat chicken and stuff like that and still be on a on a diet um or maybe i wasn't before i was health conscious like i was still health conscious i just ate meat but w during those times i remember you know if i did things for a week and maybe i might have gained weight i would kind of get discouraged and doubtful and be like okay well this not working so i might as well just go ahead and eat what i'm used to anyways but throughout this process it was different because i kept telling myself like just trust the process trust the journey i'm working out i'm doing what i'm supposed to i'm eating better like i'm drinking my water i know i feel better i'm like i just need to really trust my process because the changes are going to come i didn't gain the weight overnight i'm like i'm not going to lose the weight overnight i'm got i'm not going to see a drastic change where it looks like i've lost you know 25 pounds overnight so i have to work for the results in which i want to see so that's what i just kept telling myself i just kept telling myself this and reminding myself of this when i would feel like i was getting discouraged i stuck through it um about march like about like late march I began to really see changes like March was the month where I really started to see changes and that was after I had completed um Insanity Max 30 and I did and I ended up uh working out again and doing the original Insanity which is the program that um Insanity Max 30 um you know stem from um and so I then you know around like March and April I really started seeing my body change my clothes fit so different it was kind of like it was happening um so slow that when it came it was like boom like in your face like overnight kind of how like when you're pregnant and you know you go to sleep with a little belly and you wake up and you like okay when did my belly get this big because I've been here the whole time you know what I mean so it was kind of something like that it was very shocking and um, I could really tell the difference. What I feel like really uh, helped also was when back in December, I was struggling. Like I said, I had got sick. I was really struggling with um, kind of sticking to more of a raw uh, food diet. But um, once I, you know, stopped making excuses. I was like, no, I really need to stick to this. I really want to see like how long I can go, like how disciplined I can be. And I challenged myself. I started to stick to it. And so when I paired eating raw with working out five days a week, 30 minutes a day, man, when I tell you the weight was just like melting off, I looked like a whole new person within a, within a matter of a month's time. Even though I had been working out you know those two months prior my diet was still you know full of processed vegan food you know with soy based products and you know chips and vegan cookies and you know a lot of vegan crap um and that's why i'm not really associating myself with veganism anymore because i'm sticking more to like plant-based or like comedic diet or like alkaline lifestyle or more so just plant-based i'm not really one that's big on labels but at the same time like um, I am just plant-based as a whole. Like, I like plants, like, you know what I mean? Um, so that's, I'm associating myself with that. Vegan is not necessarily healthy because there's a lot of vegan stuff on the market that when people go vegan or they're eating a vegan, I 
see there's a YouTube channel of a family that, you know, eats vegan, but it's like vegan hamburgers and vegan hot dogs and vegan cakes and cookies and pies and chips. And it's just basically like a version of the standard American diet is just on a different, you know, level. So it's like, I want to shift from that perspective and it's nothing against that. If that's what you want to do, that's what you want to do. If that resonates with you, by all means, there's nothing wrong with that. But for me, I want to heal thyself and I have a tattoo I'm not sure if y'all can see um, the lighting may not be that good but uh, maybe I can kind of zoom in and my tattoo says heal thyself and it has a lotus and this was inspired from when I was reading Queen of Fua um, Sacred Woman no, matter of fact, watching uh, Queen of Fua's Heal Thyself uh, lecture, really and truly an inspiration for me and in getting this tattoo because I was like, dang, I really do. Like, that's my whole purpose. That's what I'm attracted to, healing in all its various forms. And so I really began to like see a change in my body. And so let me see where I go next. So yeah, I was mostly raw between like March and April. Um, I fell off and I went back cooked like May and June. And um, what I noticed is when I was eating more raw, my skin was clearer, um, my vaginal scent was better, um, I had more energy, I was waking up earlier, I didn't feel lethargic or like I needed a nap during the day. Um, those were just some slight changes. I had regular bowel movements every morning like clockwork. Um, I overall I just felt more clear I didn't have any nasal congestion or any type of like you know mucus you know heavy mucus you know lining in the back of my throat or in my nose or anything like that like things seemed like they were clearing up but when I started to incorporate not only cooked food but also vegan processed junk foods um, or box foods or frozen vegan foods whatever um, when I started incorporating things like that um, my face started to break out a lot more even when I wasn't eating dairy because I cut off dairy in December when I decided that I was gonna stop playing games <laughs> then I was nervous like I kept telling myself I'm like I don't want all this weight to creep back up on me because I didn't got comfortable with like how I look even though I'm not at my final result or not that there will ever ever really be a final result because you're always gonna continuously be finding things that you can work on and better yourself in um, areas you can better yourself in um, so it's never really like a uh, like finish line but at the same time I knew that I still had goals to uh, on my list that I hadn't yet checked off yet so um I knew that I still had work but at this place I was happier at the place I was in physically and mentally than I was um, before I started this journey so that kind of gave me some sort of comfort and then I started you know, eating cooked foods and then when I started eating cooked foods it began to open gateways to me going back to vegan junk because my whole thing was okay now you know I really feel good I don't want to really mess up the progress that I've been doing so I'm like you know eat cooked foods then when I would eat certain cooked foods I would get cravings to pair it with things that resonated you know with how I used to eat in the Western diet. Like I would crave for to have like a vegan chicken patty or vegan buffalo wings or vegan, you know, it just, over time I started to really pay attention to the fact that I was only substituting the Western diet with a vegan Western diet. And I'm just like, no, Dana, like you missing the point. Like, no, we want to heal thyself. Like we don't wanna, you, you, like, no like it's gonna only slow your progress yes you may make some sort of progress but i really want to get into deep healing and cleansing i really want to firm up the loose skin that i have the excess fat that i still have on my body i still i don't want to um lose all this weight and i'm gonna get into this because hold up oh, wait a minute let's pause right here just one more second okay so i just wanted to come in and kind of clarify because i realized in the video um that i mentioned that i'm gonna come back to y'all and speak on this topic if i remembered 
but I didn't. So I'm here to talk to you now and kind of clarify. So I know it seems as though I was really talking about my physical appearance and wanting to tighten my skin and things like that. But I want to kind of speak on why I mentioned that. It's because I, my, my end goal is to basically um, revert myself back to my true essence and my true nature as much as I possibly can. Um, I understand times are different than they were in the ancient times. And, you know, the effects may be a little different. Um you know in a way but basically that is my end goal and my end result is to um revert myself or align myself back to my true nature and so with that mentally physically and spiritually so with this physical aspect in which i was talking about i mean as though i want to deeper cleanse because i really want to tighten my skin i want my body to look as though like you know it's designed by nature um in which it is meant to to be built but my body how it looks now looks like it was designed by the western diet okay <laughs> and that i'm trying to get away from so when i mentioned about going back and forth between like eating junk and you know how i may get some results um i know that they're that the deepest and the most clean I can get and the purest I can get um, is with raw, the things from the earth that are in its purest form. And so for me to be in my purest form, I have to eat of that of the purest form. So yeah, that's what I meant. But okay, I'm gonna let y'all get back into the video, okay? Okay, bye. For progress, but I really want to get into deep healing and cleansing. I really want to firm up the loose skin that I have the excess fat that I still have on my body I still I don't want to um lose all this weight and I'm gonna get into this because I I created a video which I'll release when I'm ready but um where I was talking about this thing but let me finish this first and hopefully I remember to get back into that so I got sick in June it was around father's day I went to my dad's house and I had came down with a cold like I had started sniffling and stuff like that before I left Woke up that Sunday morning, throat was hurting the night before, so that was that Saturday. So that Sunday, my throat, you know, increased in the pain of like hurting. Um, I had congestion in the back of my nose, like my nose was running. Um, I had chills, like it was just bad. I was nauseous at some point in time, but I just really couldn't, I couldn't even do nothing. I had to ask my sister to get up and fix my baby some food because I just was not with it. Like my body, I just felt like pure shit. It got to a point where I was like more hot than I was cold. Um, it was just really, really bad. I had a lot of mucus. It just really reminded me of how I got sick back in December. So then during this time, I was really battling with whether I wanted to like stay eating cooked food like stay incorporating cooked foods into my diet or if i wanted to jump into raw but i always yo-yo and what i realized is is because i was moving too fast and that when you're making these kind of changes sometimes going at a slower pace is a lot better than going at a more faster pace um and sometimes going fast it may trip you up that's just like if you're driving the car too fast and you gotta slam on brakes or you know something happens um chances are you're gonna crash and burn because you're going you're out of control you know what i mean you're going too fast you have to kind of learn to crawl um before you walk and so i wasn't really realizing that the camera was kind of lagging so i had to turn on the light so hopefully it looks better what ended up happening is i realized that now that i've taken a break from social media and so this, this translates over to what I was feeling. So like after I was feeling sick, like I just was feeling lost. Like I, I was feeling um, overwhelmed. Like I was feeling frustrated. I was feeling, um, you know, just stuck on stupid, honestly, or just stuck. Like my feet are just stuck in the mud because it's like, I know what it is I need to do. But at the same time, I'm the type of, work, type of person where I need some type of like plan or layout or I need to be able to follow something. That way I can kind of know what it is I'm looking for, even though everybody is different, especially when it comes to something like health, everybody's, you know, genetic structure is different and, you know, um, body, you just, 
you know, chemistry may be different from that of another. And so I understand there's a lot of different variables um, to consider, but if I have some kind of plan and I kind of have an idea of what I'm looking for, um, then I would feel more comfortable because when I'm looking for those things, it'll allow me to kind of be aware of more of my body or aware of what it is I'm supposed to be looking for. So it kind of gives me some insight. So that way, if I do experience something like it, then I can be like, it's a confirmation to be like, okay, you're, you're on the right path. Like you're doing good. Like, you know what I mean? Um, so, um, let and then that led into while me being on social media I begin to feel overwhelmed because I'm not the type where I follow people who don't you know um, have anything knowledgeable to offer like I follow a lot of people that in which post which are like-minded people like me and so they post things that you know are that resonate with spirituality and healing you know holistically and things like that um, and African spirituality as well so I follow a lot of people like that so you can imagine the flood of information that's going on and you got you know this meme here saying this and you have this person saying this and you have people in the comments disagreeing with the information that this person put out and then you have this book recommendation here and while I'm reading this book and I feel like I should read this more you know because that seems like what I need and you know this person's opinion and my opinions and my thoughts and it's just a lot it's just it just was a fucking lot so i'm just like man all of these feelings and all of these emotions and all these trials and errors along with my financial situation and you know this matrix ass system and you know how fucked up everything is like everything was driving me crazy mentally you know even though verbally i'm not really expressing it you know i'm striving to do my best to push through it but at the same time it's like you know my spirit's like okay you need to kind of pull back from this because that's when you know um thoughts of inadequacy comes in that's where thoughts of you know um and what i mean by inadequacies i mean feeling as if you're not doing enough feeling as if you know you don't got enough money saved you know feeling as if you um you know you're not doing enough as far as your education or maybe you should have went the route that this person went because you know um it just seemed to have been more successful but yet you want to go this route like your spirit and your journey is calling you this way but you're comparing your journey to somebody else's feeling inadequate and then what that does is that takes you away from the focus on your journey because you're focused on um somebody else's journey and how it compares and how you lack what they have when you might not that might not be what you're supposed to have i mean it may in a way but it may not look like that you know what i mean but you have in order for you to know that you're gonna have to focus on your journey so long story short i felt like i really needed a social media detox um i deleted all of my apps because first um back in earlier around the time where i started focusing uh, i think it was like around march april um what i had started to do is i had begun to not check my phone first thing in the morning so what it led to is me being more productive so I decided and at that time what I had did is because I wasn't gonna check it first thing in the morning I didn't feel the need to delete my apps and all that stuff so I put all my apps in a folder so that way it wouldn't be on my front screen and I wouldn't be tempted to just go ahead and click it so long story short like I said I became more productive and so this time I was just like okay I think I really need to cleanse myself from social media and just get away from like everybody's opinions and stuff like that because I need to figure out what it is that I really want to do as far as my, my professional career. I know I want to be an educator or I know I am an educator. Um, in my mind, I may not have gone to a actual you know, institute and got a certificate, but in my heart, I educate. I educate my daughter every day. People who are on this and don't know about it, like I educate them and they'll be like, dang, you, you know, I learned a lot. That makes sense. So I consider myself to be an educator, not in the Western you know western society's viewpoint but i consider myself an educator i'm limitless um so um i'm just like you know in order for me to really thrive and know what it is i need to i know what it is i want and where i want to go um i need to cultivate myself like really cultivate myself and i started noticing i would spend a lot of time on social media again not to pry into people's lives but because it's all this information and you know i'm I'm, 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 I have a thirst for knowledge, you know what I mean? I'm thirsty for knowledge. And so, you know, I understand not all knowledge is good knowledge, but, you know, I try to surround myself with 
that type of like uh, mentality and you know that type of information because it keeps me on my toes but at the same time bombarding myself with it was not good so like I said I ended up taking a social media fast and through this I was just like you know because I needed some structure and some guide I decided to pick up the comedic diet because actually I picked up this book um, in 2017 um, I started reading it last year in 2018 while I was working at um, when I was working overnight and when I was reading it I was just so amazed and I resonated with it so much but you know I was so back and forth yo-yoing with you know starting this book and stopping this book because I felt you know at this moment I needed this and in that moment I needed that I just needed to take some time and just really sit down and really um, stay focused on one thing seriously because I I tend to, I'm an air sign too. I think that has something to do with it. Like we just kind of la, la, like sometimes. And so I got to ground myself um, and I'm learning that. But um, Kemetic Diet was what my soul was really calling to because I still am reading the Hood Health Handbook and I still go back and forth between Queen of Fool because I do have a video posted about that. But with Queen of Fool, like setting up the altar, it's just a lot of missing pieces I have. And I know people have told me, and I thank you all that provided clarity on how everything worked with uh, setting up my altar um, in the video where I was speaking on Sacred Woman and like my confusion. Um, but I just decided at this point in time, um, I just, it, the plan is fine. Like it's nothing wrong with the book. It's just at the time. Um, I just feel like comedic diet is just a better fit for me at this time on, on my journey. So that's why, um, you know, my essence is calling. I'm going to revisit uh, Sacred Woman when it calls out to me. And I know, you know, when the time is right and I have matured uh, spiritually um, more, um, I feel like uh, then I'll revisit it because I feel like right now I'm not... I need some more basis and this for me gives me a little bit more structure right now for what I'm looking for um, here so that's why I am focusing on that you know me detaching from social media it's me yearning for a, a connection with my higher self and um, for me comedic diet really does do that and so I decided like it, I just kind of I was teetering with the idea of like going on social media detox and I was just like I looked at the date and then I kept hearing everybody saying like there was a solar eclipse, a total solar eclipse that was coming and you know, uh, this was in June, you know, and I started hearing about it and so I was just like, you know what, I'm, I was like, I'm gonna start July 1st. I said, cause, and then I started looking at the significance of the fact that, you know, July 1st also marked the beginning of the second half of the year. So that means we have six months until December so we've completed our first six months of the year also that the solar eclipse was coming on July 2nd so there was a lot of new energy and then there was another there's a lunar eclipse I believe that's coming in like you know July 16th 17th around that time and so like it was just so many significances and then the fact that I wanted to do a social media detox and I was just really feeling like I just needed you know some sort of like clarity and some sort of guidance um, well, not even that. I feel like I've been having clarity and guidance. I mean, it's that too, but I just feel like I have too much noise and distraction to the point where like I hear it, but I don't hear it clearly. So that's what I mean by like I have clarity, but I don't. And so it just takes me zoning out the distractions to be able to connect, uh, more with what i'm looking for which is you know union with my higher self so i started comedic diet um july 1st um two weeks ago i started reading the book again um and like i said i used to read it overnight i think i don't did i even finish that thought that i that i used to read this while i was working overnight at my other job or whatever and i stopped because i was yo-yoing between books and you know not being able to decide okay so um i picked this back up and i mean y'all when i tell y'all i highlight like it's like every page deserves to be fully highlighted i have um like star i have uh like parentheses around stuff and i have the whole passage highlighted because that mean like yeah th this some heavy stuff like trying to do it with y'all see and i have a couple of passages i want to read out of here for like inspiration um for those who where this message may resonate the pink highlighter was 
what I was highlighting the first time I read through the book and I stopped on page 60. Um, the blue highlighter was me restarting from beginning to where I ended up, where I left off on. Um, and I highlighted things that seem to resonate more because my understanding has deepened since I last picked this book up. So, um, what I was about to show y'all, what I was about to show y'all, I want to hurry up for my camera started trying to overheat on me. Um, what I was about to tell y'all. Oh, I have some, some quotes laid out, but I was about to tell y'all something. Oh, 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 so basically, like, I'm transitioning to the comedic diet. Um, I'm still learning um, about all that it entails, but it has a guide. I printed, I, I printed these, uh, I made copies out of my own personal book, but I'll show you in the book, you know, that that's there and that's where I got my copies from. So... And what also, because I was going to do alkaline diet, but this honestly is very similar to the alkaline diet. And the reason why also I like it, well, you can't really see, but that's a list of like the alkaline foods or the comedic foods. And then it has a list of like alkaline vegetables in the comedic diet. And it has that list. Um, it has the um, behind it because it shows like that's the original food from like you know, around the times that the Kemetans or Kemetic people, what are now called Egyptians, they called themselves Kemetic, the Kemetic people or Kemetic culture, Kemetic spirituality, Kemet, which is also what Egypt is now called today, but it was called Kemet. And Kemet to them was black land, black people, charcoal, black. You know what I mean? Um, so it also has like a maintenance plan. It has a summary version. I'm sorry y'all can't really see. Um, you know, you can inbox me, ask me to send you a picture of it. You know, if you, so if you're interested and you want to see like if this book is what you need to before you actually get it, I can do that for you. Um, and then it has a more detailed plan, which is like two pages. And it tells you like food for the mind and soul, like breakfast what you do for mid morning, lunch, afternoon, dinner. Um, it's a deep book. It's something you have to study. I don't feel like this book is something that you can just read through and just, you know, go. I mean, especially if you're interested in the, in, in the culture, which I am, and that's where my path has led me now. So even to the point where y'all, Metal Nature is what hier the hieroglyphics are called, right? And I printed this off and this is the uh, alphabet list um or the metal the metal nature alphabet and um the metal nature like i said is the hieroglyphs um and it breaks down into the sign like what what the sign depicts and then the sound of it and i'm going to self-teach myself how to speak metal nature um it is the language of the comedic people um in metal nature means um divine speech um, so they turn it into an art and this is our true language. Um, uh, I feel like in my heart, um, and so like, I'm gonna self teach myself. It ain't gonna be easy, but I'm excited. Um, and the reason why it got me interested is because in Kemetic Diet, it, it breaks down the hieroglyphs as far as when it comes to mind, body, and soul, because of course it's teaching you the, their teachings. And the thing I really like about Muada Ashby, and I think I was just saying this, but I didn't finish my thought, is that him and his wife Karen because they're a, they're a partnership in this book um she's a contributor as well um they went to Africa and they studied the hieroglyphs they studied in the temples they um spirit came to them and helped them decode this so it's not necessarily a book off speculations assumptions and you know own personal ideology or whatever no they it's the truth you know what i mean they went and they studied it and so i feel very confident i feel very safe in knowing that when i study his work and he has several books um from the point where you basically self-teach yourself because he's self-taught um and he shows and proves most people with westernized you know mind you know want somebody to have a degree or this is that a third and i mean he does but he's also self-taught on a lot of things where if a you know, Caucasian looked at him and are like, they'll call it pseudoscience, you know, because, you know, it's our beliefs and our beliefs are true, but they don't want people to know that. And they know that their opinion has a bigger influence because they're bullied. Like, it's, we ain't going into all that, but y'all know what I'm talking about. 
So yeah, like you had, he breaks down what the hieroglyphs mean. Um, hopefully I can, here we go, right here. Hopefully I can show you. He kind of breaks down what the hieroglyphs mean um, because it all relates to body, mind, and soul. And so he basically teaches you um, the the way that they did things um, from a, a holistic perspective, which they believe that, you know, the mind, body, and spirit are all one. And so if you're interested in comedic culture, knowledge, spirituality, if you're looking for enlightenment, which that is our purpose in life is to become enlightened and have a union with uh, like our ego itself with our, you know, supreme being. Like if you're looking for that, like I really highly, highly, highly recommend comedic diet. And y'all, I'm on just page 75 and I've learned so much already if you're really looking for enlightenment um then i would really highly recommend it i take it seriously i feel all good because you know had they taught this kind of stuff in school like i would have been the biggest nerd ever like i am right now okay so you know um so i'm just documenting my journey and um you know Hopefully I can come in, you know, recording on this camera and also on my phone's camera and just kind of share my journey. Um, as I get more comfortable and as I discover more things and you know, the things that my spirit, you know, lets me know that I need to share um, in hopes that it helps and inspire somebody else because um, that's my purpose, then I will share. Just like my loose skin, like my appearance and stuff like that. As I'm working on things and I'm figuring things out, you know, I'm gonna be open. I'm gonna be transparent on this journey because I believe, you know, we are one, you are me, I am you. Anything that I can do, you can do. You gotta find your purpose in this life and you really have to cultivate that. And if, you know, I can inspire anyone to do that and blow air their way or blow some motivation their way to kind of swiftly, you know, put them in the path or the right direction, then by all means, I'm for it. So I have a video, I have footage of me going on a haul, a uh, grocery haul, and kind of giving you an idea of what I'm gonna be eating. Um, and I was gonna attach that to this video, but because I talked so much in this video, and I need it to because I need to express everything that's been going on in order for me to move forward and um, see this through correctly uh, I had to say everything I need to say so if it resonates with you and you sit here and you listen then it does and if it doesn't then you know it just doesn't but it's for those who it will resonate with um, so I'm gonna attack I'm gonna make that a whole separate video um, y'all know how I do I'm excited about that that I get to make that a whole separate video and y'all can hear the music and just enjoy you know what you're seeing I'm excited for that. So um, I'm gonna have a, another video giving you an idea about what I'm going to be eating on the comedic diet. Oh, 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 I want to talk about this. This is in the back of the book. See what I'm talking about, y'all? How to adopt the comedic diet. This is what is in the back. And I will take this off so I can kind of give y'all an idea of what it is. So it says, it is recommended that the program be adopted in stages that the user should not skip this stage. The, um, should not skip stages as this may reduce cleansing reaction detoxification that is more severe than would be expected by progressively adopting a better diet gradually so then it gets into like okay if if the current diet consists of over 50 percent cooked foods meat processed meats and processed foods refined sugar white flour non-organic food or fried foods then it says the, the instructions is to begin comedic diet program by adapting stage b so this is the stage i'm at where for the next six months to a year, I will adopt comedic diet maintenance plan, which I do have that attached here after I have the list of vegetables and stuff. So I'm to eat 50% cooked food, 50% raw foods, fresh fruits and vegetables. Um, cooked foods are to follow the guidelines in this book for transition diet foods, no meats. Use maple syrup, dates, or stevia herb instead of refined sugar. Use whole wheat flour instead of kamut flour. Y'all, I think I butchered that. Instead of white flour, no fried foods. Um, and once I've done this for six months to a year, um, then I will transition into 80% raw, 20% cooked. Um, in the cooked foods, I follow the guidelines from the list. Um, green vegetable juices, use organic instead of non-organic foods, preferably no pasta, no cooked breads, no potato, 
no cassava. And then once I've done this for one to two years, then I will have to do 100% raw, fresh fruits and vegetables, green vegetable juices, use organic instead of non-organic food, preferably uh, for one to two years. And then that's, you know, that's the goal to maintain this program for the rest of my life. It does have certain things down here that it recommends that you take, but for the most part, the closest thing I'll have to any of this is flax oil. Well, not flax oil, but the flax meal and the kamut juice, which is kind of like wheatgrass. It's like a green powder, whatnot. Um, and I'll kind of give you a view of the list. It's the comedic vegetables, fruits, and herbs used in ancient times. Sorry, it's kind of cut off over there, but it's like barley, celery, chickpea, um, cucumber, dates, eggplant, you know, stuff like that. Herbs included. And you can pause that if you need to. And then of this side it just has alkaline vegetables for the comedic diet and so you get a long list and the thing the reason why i went with this is because with dr Savy and like alkaline not saying that like his that he was you know doing anything bad but it's just like with the list like it would just change up too much for me like sometime you know if i consider alkaline like i would look at the list and then you know you look at the updated list and a lot of stuff was like you know some stuff was taken off and it's just like okay like which one is it it just was it just didn't have no certainty for me um not saying because i love dr savia so you know it ain't nothing like that but like i said this is the more detailed plan um yeah just kind of give you an overview sorry if my camera be going in and out of focus yeah just kind of give you an overview on evening dinner and then kind of give you a breakdown of like the wheatgrass and stuff like that so also for the 30 days which i started filling out y'all i'm working on consistency i, I gotta be honest with you so y'all can see july 3rd and it's like july 13th so yeah <laughs> this is just your um 30 day healing diet and fasting plan for the body soul and mind or my body mind and soul and i think i just needed a little bit more planning to stay consistent because i kind of was like confused on like a little bit of the process but like as i read the book more i feel like i'll get more of an understanding so um this is pretty much what i'm doing how i'm solving the battling between back and forth of raw cooked raw cooked i'm going to mostly even though i'm not i'm not skipping the plan i'm still going to stay in stage b until and this is why another significance because i was like the six months i was like oh okay i was like i can do plan b from july to december and then starting in january um of the not necessarily new year but new calendar year because new year is actually in spring um but um the new calendar year i can start on doing the 80 percent 20 the 80 percent raw or live foods 20 percent cooked so I was like, that works out perfect. I was like, that's even more significant. It's like, if that's not confirmation, like, I don't know what is. Um, so that was my reasoning for choosing that. So I still am gonna do the 50-50. I went between doing like the first three days raw in the, in the next three days of the week cooked and then on Sundays fast because that's the day I was born on. So Queen of Food did suggest like fasting on like your born day. And I, and I need to get in the process of that anyways because it strengthens my will and my discipline. So I was thinking about that and then I felt like that gave me, you know, if I messed up or I didn't stick to that, it just made me feel guilty and it made me feel like I had to go back to the drawing board so that I don't have any of that anxiety and pressure on myself. And I'm putting it on myself, nobody else. Um, that's something I have to work on and um, I'm, I'm doing that. But what I decided is I'm going to eat mostly raw. Yes, I'm going to stay within the mindset of doing 50-50 and I'm going to show you where that comes in. But I'm going to strive mostly eating raw as like this is like just how i eat like all the time like i'm gonna just bombard myself and focus on eating raw whole foods and appreciating the the authenticity of the food and the healing powers that it possesses and also in the book it tells you that in comedic culture it was believed that god is in god is nature and um when you are eating um foods that are quality the 
from the divine that um that the divine possesses because it is a part of the divine then you are that is a way of you connecting with the divine and when you're conscious of that then it brings one connections closer because you really feel empowered you feel joyous you feel thankful because those are all characteristics of the divine one true creator so it just makes sense like it just feels home for me what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna just mostly eat raw and when i feel the urge where i'm just like okay maybe i want some cooked green beans or you know just something savory you know because that's there then i will you know put that factor that into my 50 percent but my goal because my goal ultimately is to be more raw i don't want to kind of have cooked food be my gateway because i've noticed through my patterns that when I incorporate a lot of cooked food, like I said in the beginning of the video, that it really is like a gateway for me. It's like a gateway to flee me into craving this and then that and then that. And by the time I'm eating all of this stuff and I'm craving all of this stuff, I'm not craving the raw natural foods because I want all of this stuff, which is really like, you know, stimulating my senses in a way where it's almost like disembalancing me, but I'm enjoying it. Um, because I'm comfortable there and it makes me happy but at the same time the habit um mentally and the habit physically may not necessarily be beneficial to me so my body says raw my body says raw so that's ultimately my journey and that was the point of me creating this video and I just really I know I went into detail about a lot it's a long video um but you know hey this is me and I'm really a detailed person and I really just want to give y'all my perspective and really give y'all insight and be honest and transparent with you in my journey because I know that you know somebody gonna resonate somebody gonna feel me I know that um so yes I'm really excited to share this journey with y'all I'm gonna pop in and out and kind of let y'all know how things are going um you know it's inspiring me to kind of like you know make videos on like what what i've learned lately and how it's affecting my life in a beneficial way like if i notice any changes like what changes do i notice good or bad um you know things that have been helping me along the way to keep me balanced and um i'm gonna share that with you all so i want to end off this video on reading a couple passages probably like two on something that really inspired me sums up everything that i've been saying throughout this video it says do not quit regardless of if you fell a hundred times imagine if you had the attitude when you were a baby trying to walk if every time you fell down and maybe got a few bumps and bruises in the process you decided that you were a failure and that the process of learning to walk was much too hard where would you be today you would still be crawling around on your hands and knees with continued effort no matter how long it takes you commit to succeeding for as you think so you become um then it also talked about something else which i was dealing with on social media these persons mentioned above who can convert seemingly effortlessly also had to go through the stage of striving failures and continue effort in the past however this may not be evident now because they may have done it in a previous lifetime and now their deeper memory is triggered and all they have to do is pick up where they left off no one person has been more blessed with talent special gifts or willpower than any other whatever talent gifts or willpower a person has is due to their previous work in this area in this or past or past lifetime so it is not valid to compare oneself to others except to be inspired by those who are more advanced than you in this area as your enthusiasm wanes and self-doubt rises let them serve as proof to your mind that it can be achieved um, let the glow of health in their face and the bounce of vitality in their step inspire you and allay your fears because of doubt and insecurity, fear of lack of willpower or desire to change, most people resist making the corrections that are needed to practice spirituality in its highest and purest essence. Yet it is only this intensity of practice that will lead them to attain that for which they have been seeking and which cannot be attained by any other means. That is self-knowledge and self-discovery in a state of union with the higher self. Or to put it in simple terms, true health and true abiding happiness and peace. The fact that these changes can be challenging is evident by the statement of Jesus that many are called but few are chosen. Many people take this statement to mean that there are only a few special chosen people who are blessed enough to become saints and sages, right? However, that is not what the statement means. What Jesus is remarking about here is that many people become inspired and enthusiastic but only few stay the course. The others give up by giving in to their weak will, uh, insecurities, doubts, fear, laziness, the coveted state enlightenment is available for everyone. One only has to apply the formula. If 
you continue to persist no matter how slow the, the pace may seem, you will succeed even in this very light time. Basically that sums up everything that I've been saying. Um, it inspired me and it just let me know that I can't give in to my lower self. Like if I'm going to union myself, then I have to be disciplined. I have to work for these things to be one with the divine and to attain what I've been searching for. So with that being said, family, I hope y'all come along with me on this journey. I'm really excited. I hope you enjoyed this video and it gave you some insight to um, things that you may not have known. So enlightenment. So I'm going to end this video with Hotep, love and enlightenment. Peace, love and light family. And I will see y'all in another video. Peace. I really want you, girl